Hi, I'm Mia Pittman and I'm a Level 3 Creative Media student and today we have Thomas George. Um, I'm going to interview him about his experience in the industry. So, hello. Hello, thanks for having me on this great podcast. <laughs> with this lovely setup in the studio. No, it's brilliant, isn't it? Well, it you is. did it, so it was well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll take all the, the credits for that one. Yeah, well, he's our most beloved um, media technician. Well, yes, I suppose. Media lecturer and Welshman. Yep, that's the most important part. That's the most important part, that's essential. So, yeah, so I want to ask you a few questions. Let's go. Let's go. So, um, where did your passion for industry, for media begin? Um, I always remember, like, in films mm-hmm. as a kid. I always remember being a big, like, film fan, going to collect films from, like, it was with the car boot sales quite a lot. I'd go to my nan's house every weekend and we'd watch, like, horror films or, like, old films that she was into, like, 1940s films, 1950s films. And then I remember there was a specific day. It was a rainy Sunday afternoon. Paint <laughs> okay. a picture in your head, okay? Right, okay. And I was over at my nan's house and she showed me the film Zodiac, the David Fincher film okay. from 2007. And I remember being a kid, I must have probably been about 12 at the time, and I remember watching that film. And when the credits came up at the end, I remember sitting there and I could do the rain outside, it's on the wind door. It's as clear as day, me, I promise. And I remember thinking, I want to do something like this when I'm older. I want to make something like this film. I never have. I've never made a film like that. I probably never will. But that's where really the, it went from a hobby into a, I think I want to do this as a career, as an education work, going into school, going into my GCSEs. So that was the real sort of like pinpoint moment, I think, where I thought to myself, I really want to pursue this as not just a love anymore and a hobby but as a career and as something that I want to work in for the rest of my life which is a scary thing to think about but uh, yeah that was the moment that was the film very cinematic it is like so when they make a film about me in the future which they obviously will I wonder who would play me who's who's, who's, who's Idris Elba yeah yeah, Idris Elba he's a good looking guy yeah 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 yeah. I'm too good looking for him right yeah yeah but no I think well, yeah, when I think back to those times as a kid, um, there was no sort of like, my parents were never into films, my, no one I know growing up in a small little Welsh mining village was into films. You would never think that anyone from Hiruai and Aberdeen would ever go on to work in, you know, on big budget films or big TV shows. But um, yeah, watching films with my nan, I think, was definitely something that was a real big impact on me as a kid. And I didn't really know it at the time, but like looking back, she showed me so many good films that... I never would have viewed of if it wasn't so beautiful. Nan, if you're watching, I love you. Thank you so much for getting me into films. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, so what inspired you to go to university instead of going straight into the industry? Um, I'll be honest with you, me, and I wasn't very good in school. Uh, I had good grades, but I was a bit of a naughty student. I wasn't... Um, I didn't really like school. I didn't like uh, a lot of the lessons like science or maths or history or any of that sort of nonsense. But I did like media. I really enjoyed my media lessons and my English lessons. And I remember there was a day where my English teacher pulled me aside and he said, if you stop being a clown, you could do really good things. You could go and do something, make something of yourself. And again, growing up in Aberdeen, if anyone knows Aberdeen watching this, it's not the best town. There's not a lot of facilities. There's not a lot there for anyone. And those words stuck with me then. And then... When I went to uh, sixth form, I only did sixth form for a year, I found sixth form to be really difficult. I was doing media and English and history, but I just wasn't getting on with it. I, all I wanted to do was media. So I spoke to my careers counsellor in school, and they said, why don't you go to college, because then you just do one subject, you don't have to do English and history and maths. And So I said, okay. So I went to college, did media there for two years, which was really fun. I'm, doing, I'm teaching the course now that I was on. Level 3 media, so it's kind of weird to see it from both sides as a student and as a teacher. But I did my Level 3 media course, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an IT technician. Oh, really? Yeah, that was like the dream as a kid, or work in a game shop. Well, that's everybody's dream. Yeah, but days. my mother was really sort of against that. She was like, no, you can't work in a game shop, that's stupid. So I remember when I was in college, my college lecturer, Amanda, she was amazing. She, again, like my English teacher, sort of pulled me aside and was like, you could do something with your life if you wanted to because you're really good at this you're really passionate about this and again none of my friends went to university nobody in my family went to university I had never spoken to anyone that had gone to university or only the people that were teaching me so I was like I can't go to university I'm I'm this I'm from this little town no one ever makes anything of themselves I'll probably just end up working in a factory or a warehouse till the day I die 
And she was like, no, Tom, you know, there's funding available to you, there's loans available to you. So I was very fortunate to get a good loan, some good funding from the Welsh Government, big up the Welsh Government, and um, I was able then to get a place in university studying media. I did work in the industry whilst being in uh, whilst going to university as well. I worked in um, I did a few like independent films and I did a few like sort of smaller TV shows for like BBC Three. But I wanted to learn more about the industry that I love. I didn't want to just get jumped straight in, so I wanted to go to university to sort of learn more skills, learn more of the history, learn more of the future of where it's heading. So I think that was why I wanted to go because I wanted to learn as much as I possibly could, I guess. That was the main reason. So even though you have like a negative kind of aspect towards education younger, because it connected to your passion of media, you sort of then realised that learning things academically would actually make yeah. it for you. And yeah, I think I had amazing teachers, mm -hmm. I'll be honest. I think if I were to have teachers that didn't push me and didn't believe in me, I probably wouldn't have ever gone to university, but I was very fortunate. And then when I was in university, I had three amazing lecturers, Neil, Maria and David, and they were instrumental in getting me into the industry and getting me equipped for where I am today, I guess, yeah. yeah. So even though you have worked in the industry, you're now a media teacher, do you think your positive sort of influences with other teachers to do media, that's inspired you to be a media lecturer, would you say? I think so. I, it's funny you mention that because I do think that was a big turning point for me. I remember being in university and my lecturer, Neil, who's an amazing guy, knows everything about films, really funny guy, really like down to earth. Because when you think of university, you think of these like stuffy, like, oh, I'm a university lecturer. So I was quite worried about that. And it's, you know, I've never had a teacher like that before. But then when I met Neil on the first day and he was this really nice guy, really funny, loved all types of films, knew everything about everything, I was like, oh, I'm really going to enjoy this. So... I sort of looked at Neil as my inspiration, I guess, as a teacher. Like, mm -hmm. how Neil was with me, that's how I want to be with my students, I guess. So, yeah, looking at my lecturers in the past and teachers, he was definitely a, a reason why I'm teaching now and how I teach the way I teach, I guess. Yeah, so moving on from your academic life and your now teaching, um, tell me about your industry job. So what roles did you do and... Like, what projects did you work on specifically? So, I was very fortunate in college to get... Uh, my lecturer put me forward for a job role with the National Film and Television School, which is, like, a big film school in London. Uh, a lot of famous, like, filmmakers, cinematographers, writers have gone there. So I was able to go there as a script supervisor. And a script supervisor, for people who don't know, is someone who keeps, like, notes and continuity while shooting. So they are responsible for, like putting the marks down, they're responsible for making sure that the costumes look the same, the hair looks the same, basically making sure that things run smoothly in the video side of things, so like there's no clear like mistakes yeah. on camera. So I was very fortunate to do that, and I learned under a woman, Stephanie, who was really good, she taught me a lot of like techniques and how to be better talking to actors and directors and filmmakers, and then from there then I was very lucky to get picked up by a BBC3 show that was filming in Wales called The Fear. Now, nobody's probably ever heard of the show because it wasn't a very good show. I think it only had like five episodes. But it was a really good experience and I got to work with people I've looked up to, people I've heard about, former students that were also on my college course that were now working in the industry. So it was a really nice full circle sort of feeling. And then from there, then I was fortunate to start working on other BBC shows like Doctor Who. I worked on the Peter Capaldi season of Doctor Who and the Jodie Whittaker season. Not a lot, only for like two or three episodes, but that was still a really cool thing to see because Doctor Who is this big, okay. huge thing in Britain, isn't it? And across the world, I guess. So that was a real big moment for me. Where I was like, oh, yeah, like, I am doing something with this. Like, this is actually kind of cool. Yeah. And then from there, then I got to work on Sex Education, which is a really big popular show as well on Netflix. And again, it, I was working as a script supervisor, junior script supervisor, and... Being on these big sets was daunting and really scary, but also really, like, fulfilling. Yeah. It was a hard day's work. Like, the days are, like, 18 hours long, 16 hours long. But after you finish filming, you feel like, oh, I've done a really good day of work today. And you feel, like, really proud of what you've done. And then when you watch them then on TV with your family or your friends, like, oh, yeah, I remember shooting that. And I remember this and I remember that. And it's just a really, really nice, like, you take a lot of pride in what you're doing. And everyone who's working on these sets is so professional, so prepared. And it's a wake-up call from working on student films to then going and working with Netflix. You're like, oh my God, this is okay. night and day different. Yeah. 
Um, a personal highlight of mine, and I've never bring this up, as everyone knows, was I got to work with Tom Cruise on The Mummy. Oh, he's mentioned uh, this a thousand times. The Mummy, not a very good film. That, that, that's a common theme people say about me. I've worked on a lot of bad things. The Mummy, the uh, uh, the bad, the bad seasons of Doctor Who, as people say. I don't watch Doctor Who. I've never, ever watched any of the episodes of Doctor Who that I've, I've helped work on. But I got to work on The Mummy for three or four days when they were shooting in Scotland, and that was a really cool experience. Um, I didn't meet Tom Cruise, but he was in the same room as me, okay. which was kind of scary. And I did look at him once, and he turned, and I looked away because oh, I didn't want to make things no. awkward. But that, that was another really high, cool highlight of my industry time, I guess, was getting to work on a big movie set with Tom Cruise, who's an actor that I've watched for years and years. And... You know, like watching Magnolia as a kid, one of my favourite films, and then I'm like looking at Tom Cruise, who's like five feet away from him, and I'm like, oh my god, that's Tom Cruise. I do miss working on sets, I think. I, I still do a lot of freelance work from time to time, but this job's so demanding and so takes up a lot of time. And a lot of the filming opportunities are back in Cardiff or Bristol or London or Manchester, so it's a lot of travelling, a lot of time or petrol money spent getting to places, so. Yeah, it's hard to balance both. It's hard to work a full-time job and do work in, in the freelance industry or working on film sets on the weekend or whatever, but it's something I want to get more into. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to find a balance uh, with this job and working freelance, but at the moment it's, it's quite hard to juggle it. Yeah. Do you ever think that you would be like totally freelance or do you think that's just impossible to do? I don't think it's impossible for like other people, but I don't have that interest, I don't think. No? I, I like working with students, making films, you know, helping them shoot, but I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a filmmaker. Okay. I like films, and I know how to use the kit, and I know, you know, what goes into making a film, but I wouldn't say I'm a, a filmmaker no. by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, well that's quite interesting really, because you've worked on sets and you've had really good experience in the industry, but... Your opinion's kind of interesting because like the industry is not what it's cut out to be and as well like you can be you don't have to be a director all the time you can be like you said a script advisor yeah which i think suits different types of people yeah and i think a lot of students um leave level three or level two or whatever course they're doing and they're like i'm gonna go work in hollywood on iron man five as a as a director and it's like it doesn't really work like that most of the time you'll be making tea for people or you'll be like sweeping the floor or You'll be driving people around. Like, I've done that a lot as well. I was a, a runner, which is basically like a handyman just on set to give you supplies or to bring coffee and tea. And I was, because I had a driver's license, I was just hired to pick people up from train stations and drive them to set. Yeah. And then I would just sit in my car for six hours listening yeah. to the radio. I know, and like, you don't see that in the behind the scenes of movies. You just see these big sets and all these famous people. And then you cut to me, then you're sitting in a car on the side of the road. Yeah, I got another four hours left of this shift. But, but uh, I know people who make a living working as runners and they love it, so I would never begrudge anyone from doing any job. And I think students, when they leave college and go to university and start working on, you know, placements and doing work experience there, they'll realise, yeah, you don't just jump into being a director or a director of photography or sound engineer. You are, like, the tea person. Can you go make us tea? Can you go pick this up? Can you go and get me a new battery? But, again, some people like that. I'm, I've spoken a lot about this um, with students, but I'm not a very practical guy. I don't like manual work. Okay. I'm not someone who likes being on their feet all the time and, uh, you know, carrying stuff through the rain and working 16-hour days. I'd much rather come in, have some fun with the students, work for six hours and then go home. Yeah. While I know some people, like Harvey, our media technician, loves getting his hands dirty, he loves working, like, long shifts, he loves... Um, lifting kit and setting up lights and that's not what I enjoy mm -hmm. but you know I did when I was younger I think now that I've got a bit older I just sort of got a bit easier probably and my energy's been sucked from me you know oh, it happens to the best okay. of us man you know it happens to the best of us cold does to you I think yeah yeah but maybe yeah definitely to aspiring media practitioners out there what is your advice to them on getting jobs in the industry because it seems like you have a lot of experience with them trying to get different types of jobs in different aspects of the media. So what what is your advice to people out here listening? I'd say, first of all, you know, just get stuck in with whatever job role you're off. And if you're just a runner, you better be the best runner you can be, you know. You don't want to... 
be it someone who's on set and seems ungrateful to, oh, well, I'm just a runner, or oh, well, I'm only here to make tea. Yeah, but, you know, if you keep going and you keep smiling, you keep asking questions and you keep keeping everyone happy, and maybe one day they'll be like, oh, I remember Mia. She was really good on set. She was really friendly. I might ask her to come back and help us again. Or So uh, don't be discouraged if you can't find a job doing what you want straight away again. Students are always like, I want to be a cinematographer, I want to be an editor. Yeah, and they are very good, you know, but you're not going to just jump into a job doing that. So I would say, just be happy with what you're given, first of all. Mm, try not to work for free. Try to always, you know, get something out of it. When you start, you might have to work, oh, this is good experience for you, this was good, you know, uh, exposure. But then once you've started to gain some experience, you can start to be like, yeah, I'm, I've got a value now, I've got a worth, I know what I'm doing. So I would say to most students who want to work in the industry, just grin and bear it for a while, you know, just, yeah, I know I'm just a runner, but I've got to make the most of it. Know your worth as well. Don't allow yourself to be walked over and don't allow people to just not pay you or not to give you anything. And then another one I'd say is, and this is a really big one, I think, is if a student wants to be a director or a DOP or an editor, you just need to watch more films, I think. That's my advice to students all the time. It's like, look what they are doing. How can you do that? What are they doing that interests you? Why does it interest you? How can you replicate that then in your own work? So watch more, listen more to what people are saying. We look up to so watch interviews or listen to like podcasts where they're on. And just, yeah, just be, just surround yourself in there and just absorb as much knowledge and information as possible, I guess. That's what I would probably say. Yeah. And it's, a lot of it is, right place, right time, and who you know as well. So if you can go to a set and be a runner, but then get a good impression, give everyone your name. I'm Mia, by the way, it was really nice to work with you. I'd love to work with you again. Here's my number. If anything else comes up, give me a call. Just networking as well. Be confident. I think what you said about food, uh, sorry, uh, what you said about running, um, I think people, when they start to do those small jobs on sets, they start to think, well, this is going nowhere. And I think what you said about just keep going as well, mention your name to people and be really enthusiastic. That's how you get further in the wrong. But I think some people do get frustrated at first. Yeah, and you know, it is hard when you, you dream of being a filmmaker and you're just making tea for six hours a day or you like run into the shop to grab food for everyone. But like, again, it's an entry level job. No matter what job you're going to, you're always probably going to do the dirty work first of all, aren't you? Like when you start working in a restaurant, or Mia can go and clean the dishes, or Mia, you can go and sweep the floor. But then, you know, the better you are, the more, you know, polite and positive you are, and asking the right questions, giving compliments, that's always a good way then to boost yourself up and get yourself people talking about, oh, Mia was really good today, she was really helpful. Yeah, maybe she can come back tomorrow and help us with the camera or help us load in, in the gear or something. So just try to be positive with it. There's no point sitting on set being like, oh, I'm so depressed. Like, people would kill to be where you are. Yeah. So try and, you know, appreciate it a little bit more, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, so you've mentioned, obviously, your experience in the industry. A lot of people say that working in the film industry is really glamorous. I think we have covered that it's not that way. But, um, yeah, so would you do you see it as glamorous in any type of way? Or? When you work on films... It's hard then to go back and watch films and be like, oh, the magic of films. Because you've mm -hmm. been behind the scenes and there's usually a, everyone is stressed, everyone is sweating, everyone's upset, everyone's arguing with each other. And then you cut to the behind the scenes, oh, I loved working with them. It's like, no, you didn't. I saw you, you were all arguing nonstop. But I've only ever had really positive experiences on set. I've never really had a, a set experience where I've been angry or like when I finished, I'm like, oh my God, I never want to do that again. But yeah, if any students are watching this and they're thinking, oh, well, uh, you know, I want to work in the film industry because of the glamour, the glitz and all of these behind the scenes movies, it's like, it's not always that. There is usually some, yeah, there's, there's a lot of days where everyone is just depressed and, oh, we've still got 10 hours left and the lights are broke and the sun is out and we need it to stop raining. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of stress. Directors especially will... They, they must be like so many grey haired directors because of stress because it's like I've never been on a set where the director has just been 100% like that was a great day with no problems you're always going to have something run up so yeah if you are looking to get into the industry just be prepared that you are probably going to be working in a very stressful job environment 
So obviously you've given advice to students who are already interested in media. How would you persuade someone who doesn't know anything about media? Or do you recommend working in the media industry? Anyone who's, who's got a passion for working hard and always working in a flexible but demanding job environment. If you're really, if you're someone who enjoys working in an environment where like you're never going to be working in the same thing or it's never a dull moment, the media or film industry is a perfect job for anyone and you don't have to have any knowledge of films. You know, to be a runner you just have to have a good work ethic. To work on the cameras you just need to be physically strong enough to be able to carry the gear, load the gear into the cars. All you really need to work in the film industry is just a good work attitude I guess and what I love about cinema is that it's all the art forms combined so you have the visual side of like a painting so you know you bring in visuals to life you have the music obviously for music you have the theatre with the acting and the performances I think it's just everything combined and it is this magical thing where people go after a hard day's work and they go and sit in the cinema they go watch a film at home and they just escape for two hours of their day or whatever and you, you don't really take into account the 200 people who worked on that behind the scenes to make this film that made you cry or made you smile or made you angry or made you whatever. So I think if people are thinking about I would love to go and work in the film industry, it's a very creative industry, you're always going to be busy, you're always going to be working with like-minded people that love making movies or love making sets or costumes or hair and makeup. Everyone who works in the film industry loves what they do. And everyone that works in the film industry is really good at what they do and it's hard not to be inspired. When you see this in person for the first time and you're on a big set and you're seeing, you know, all these massive props and you see like the TARDIS for the first time, even if you've had the worst day of your life, it's hard not to be really grateful and really like, oh my God, I can't believe I get to do this for a living. Yeah. Like I'm working with 200 of the most talented filmmakers in the world and when you look back and you watch Sex Education or The Mummy, which wasn't a very good film, I know, but you can see then, like, oh, this is insane how it's gone from me being on the set to me and watching it in the cinema, and this is this massive film, and they've done all this editing and all this sound mixing. It's, it's magic. I think making a movie is magic, and you take people to another world. I know that's a really cringy thing to say, but you take people from their everyday life and you transport them to this world and where they can just escape reality for two hours or whatever and they can just be oh I'm happy I'm watching Tom Cruise fight a mummy who doesn't want to watch Tom Cruise punch a mummy you know what I mean well thank you so much for coming today thanks for having me um, it's been great so yeah once again Thomas George the most beloved media technician so they say Small. that's them not me saying that no I think so but yeah thank you is that a wrap that's a wrap Woo.